Coming to you live from beautiful Los Angeles, California. I'm James Pumphrey with Donut Media. Here with FD driver and American drift pioneer, Ryan the Cobra Man Turk. <laughs> hey Ryan. <laughs> Good morning, buddy. Hi. How are you doing? Hold on, hold on. I'm just going to drop a Snapchat real quick. Tight. We're... <laughs> Pioneer. <laughs> uh, we're here to answer your questions about um, drift cars, certain Toyotas with Ferrari motors in them, and all kinds of other stuff. Um, Where are these comments, questions coming from, or going to? How are we reading them? Um, well, I got some in the bank right now. Okay. And then uh, give out your gonna, phone number so we can get some They're gonna come from calls. you. Yeah, and then let's take some calls. Uh, if you want to talk to us on the phone, call 1-800-D-O-N-U-T-M-E. <laughs> <laughs> Donut me. <laughs> um, so should we jump into it? Start answering some... You can't look. I can't They got to come off the cuff. But you don't have though. questions. I, I mean, you don't have answers to the questions. They're my answers. Yeah, you got to answer so them. I can, I'm going to read them I can to see you. it. I'm, why am I here if I'm not reading the questions? You are reading the questions. Okay, fine. God. This is not going Read well. a question. All right, fine, dude. Come on. <laughs> AJ Rosader, uh, he wants to know, how does the anti-lag system in the GT86 work? What role does the MoTeC system play in operating the anti-lag system? Um, <clears throat> it's a tough one to explain. Yeah, right off the bat, a really cool one. Thanks, Man, Roger. Coffee is not even kicked in yet. Yeah. Some real tech stuff. All right. <clears throat> so the MoTeC, MoTeC M150 has a uh, map that you can tune anti-lag with. You can just switch it on and then um, tune that, but it only sustains really about five PSI off throttle, which is not a significant amount that we're looking for. We're looking for full boost pressure, which is like 30 PSI. So Nameless Performance uh, made an, a system, uh, it's called the Fresh Air Bypass System, to make that work. That's tight. Anyway. Everybody with me? Yeah, so, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, the compressor surge air, when you let off the throttle, gets rerouted back into the turbine housing, which uh, makes a better oxygenated environment to be able to add more fuel, uh, retard the timing more, and make bigger explosions in the turbo, basically, to keep the boost pressure um, high. And what we were able to do mm -hmm. was sustain more boost pressure off throttle than we actually run on, on the throttle. Well, that's so, we, so we run like 32 psi of anti-lag boost pressure off the throttle and we actually only run about 28 29 psi of boost pressure on the throttle because the turbo is basically maxed out and if we overspin the wheel then we're just going to blow the seals in the center section the anti-lag also a lot of people think it's just going to blow turbos out but mm -hmm. since drifting has relatively short um short laps or short run time you know 30 to 40 second laps max we are not going over the uh, EGT threshold to damage the turbo. So theoretically, we could have a turbo for the entire season and we just change it out um, just because, you know, routine maintenance throughout the off season. Right on. That's why it goes clack, 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 clack. It makes all the explosions. Yeah, it's not really sound. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, any tips? Julian S. Sari, hope you're out there, Julian. Jules, anybody call you Jules? Um, wants to know if you have any tips for new coming drifters. <clears throat> He's looking into the pro am there in Seattle. Cool. Um, definitely. Really good scene out there. Um, <clears throat> a lot of good people driving and drifting. A lot of people to pull experience from and, and just um, ask about um, drifting tips and all that in general. Um, I would say, I mean, there's no substitute for experience and seat time behind the wheel. Uh, I know there's quite a bit of events out there, so. Um, I would just do as much driving as you can. Limit, limit um, your upgrades on your car to what your capabilities are and your skill level. So you don't want to overdo it and spend money on a big turbo to make big power where that money could be going to entry fees, travel, tires and everything else to be able to get the seat time that you need to step it up to the next level. Tight, dude. Um, Keegan Thacker says, saw you at Grid Life. Ryan, best drifter out there. Keep it up. Thanks, bro. Yeah. Appreciate it. Say. Um, what happened to your New England accent? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you, when you, I don't even know. I mean, what happened to it? I don't know. 
The, when you start traveling a lot and you start hanging out with a bunch of people from LA who apparently don't have accents, they just say a bunch of weird words. Mm -hmm. um, it goes away. Yeah, I'm from Kentucky. I don't have an accent anymore. Anymore, yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. mean. Once you start seeing the world, you just like change your perspective. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, you're and, just like. And then what? Your accent? Just you just accent, wake up one day. And yeah, it's just you just become like, a child of the world. You're no longer from where you're from. You know, you see, you meet all kinds of people. <laughs> it just happens, man. Right. All right. So you're yeah. backing up my. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm with you for sure. My theory is. <laughs> yeah. Um, if there is, he's got some facts behind here's it. Here's one from a lady. She loves watching the new episodes of Turked. What made you decide to start doing Turked? Um, well, I had all these ideas. Uh, I was sponsored by Red Bull quite a few years ago, and I had all these ideas because, you know, being sponsored by Red Bull and their brand and what they were about, it was about doing cool, crazy stuff. Um, so I had a bunch of ideas and I tried to present it to them, but. Um, for some reason they didn't want to do anything uh, so that was a bit disappointing and then uh, my manager Jacob who's also the producer on Turt uh, met somebody at Network A and it was a perfect time to you know um, come up with a little deck and present it to them with all these ideas um, and that's kind of they took a chance on us they, had not, they hadn't done any motorsports or four-wheel like car auto, auto stuff so Network it A worked network. out, Network A, yeah, yeah. at the time. Um, so the first season was a huge hit, and it's just I wanted, it was just like the skateboard style or just the lifestyle of what I always wanted to do in cars and just have fun with. It's just the competition is such a grind, and um, there's so much work put into it that for you to keep doing that, I've been doing it for drifting 13 years now, there needed to be another outlet, and that is usually grassroots events and just going out and having fun with your homies mm -hmm. and having more of a cool, fun, um, low pressure vibe than like a high intensity, stressful environment, pressure to perform um, situation that competition brings. Yeah. Uh, Chase Lehi wants to know boxers or briefs? Um, briefs. Tight. <laughs> Tight briefs. Tight, the tightest briefs. <laughs> okay, uh, Jesus, we got a lot of questions. All right, what do we got? Uh, uh, Jesus. Uh, why did why did you choose carbon fiber helmet over traditional? Is there a considerable advantage to having carbon fiber over a more, or is it more of a personal preference? No, it's uh, carbon fiber is lighter, so there's less weight on your head, which inevitably I guess less strain on your neck. Good for your neck. Yeah. yeah. Not that helmets are super heavy, but <laughs> and carbon fiber is just looks badass. Dude, carbon fiber is lit. It's so lit. <laughs> this dude is like carbon fiber stronger, dude. Oh, it also is in most yeah. cases, in some cases, not all cases. Um, dude from Spain wants to know what do you think of the two JZ versus RB twenty six. I don't know. I mean, you're you're a JZ guy. I'm a, I guess yeah, but yeah. I like both engines. They're both yeah. super rad. Um, they both have big power capability. The only thing um, that the Toyota engine has over the Nissan is that um, you can bore and stroke it to a bigger displacement. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, well, don't quote me on this, I'm not an RB expert, but I think you can go to 3.0 or 3.2 for the RB. I haven't seen anything bigger than that. And for the Jay-Z, most stroker kits are generally 3.4 liter. And then there's even some 3.5 or 3.6 maybe? I don't know, don't quote me on that. Well, we don't have to, you're on. <laughs> don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, what was the first car that you ever drifted? Uh, first car I ever drifted would be a Mustang. Really? Yeah. V6? 1990. <laughs> 1990. Uh, LX, 5.0. Fox body. Yep. Notchback or? No. Fastback? You cannot afford the notchback. Yeah. Those were super sick and pricier than a piece of crap that had uh, Bondo and um, half a paint job on it that I had. You call it half a paint job, I call it a livery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how did you like the drift event in Montreal? I love it. My, uh, this is definitely my favorite event of the year so far. Uh, Montreal was, was sick coming back. I uh, competed there in 2005 and 2006, basically started my competition drifting career, so to speak. 
and uh, hadn't been there in about 10 years. So it was rad going back, same track. Saw a lot of old friends that I haven't seen since I um, you know, last was there. So that was really cool to catch up and I definitely would like to go back. The track was super fun, had a lot of elements from like all the other tracks that we run throughout the season. Um, even though it was an oval track, it was flat. Um, and there was like a cool manji coming down the straight, the front straight right in front of the fans. And then had a cool touch and go up on the wall. And then another nice decreasing radius turn into a, um, a little manji to the finish line. So I had like, it was a lot, pretty diverse mm -hmm. as far as, um, you know, what we usually run, which is just kind of a boring oval track with a little infield thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, it was cool. I had a blast. Which fans mean? were sick. Yeah. Fans were unbelievable. They were out of their out of their seats clapping for everybody as that's they awesome. would exit the track. So that was really cool to see. That gets that gets the drivers in another I don't know, it just gets you super pumped and, and wants um, makes you want to put on a even better show out there in a track. Get closer any? to walls, closer to wrecking your car, all yeah. that. Did you learn any French? I did not learn any French. <laughs> I probably learned less French. French kissing. <laughs> all them drift girls. Woo -hoo. Uh, so speaking of getting closer to walls and wrecking your car, um, what's the worst Great. wreck you've ever been in? The worst wreck? Yeah. Uh, I was probably just before Atlanta when I got into a rollover accident 50 yards from my driveway. Jeez. How about on track? <laughs> on track? Yeah. I don't know. No big ones? Yeah, I mean, I, I rode off a couple chassis mm -hmm. at Irwindale mainly. Like three years in a row, I wrecked my car there and had to rebuild another one. It's coming up? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> in October. Is it, a, is it a Days of Thunder, Talladega Night situation where well, you, you've seen the fear and now going yes. back to that track? You're just yeah. like, oh, come on, you beast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I call it a beast. For sure. <laughs> yeah. When I'm whooping its ass. <laughs> All right, let's get in some Ferrari questions. Yeah? Sure. <laughs> um, everybody, everybody wants to know about the intake, right? Yeah, everyone wants What's to up know. What's up with the intake? It's going through the windshield. <clears throat> well, if we flip the intake around mm -hmm. to the front, then it would just look like crap. You open up the hood, and there's like these two got gross looking, like U shaped bends coming off the front of the engine to air boxes. That looks pretty crappy, so. Uh, this car is not for competition. It's going to be mainly for demos and shows and like just all around having a blast. And it's going to be pretty, pretty rad to drive. But I definitely wanted the engine bay to look like as Ferrari as possible and as cool as possible. So that's why they cut um, through the firewall for the intakes. And it's going to have an actually uh, a really cool induction system where uh, both are going to split to each side of the car, to mm -hmm. each fender. Um, so they're going to have its, its intake will be underneath the dashboard and then the filters will be coming out the side or underneath the side fenders, um, which should be pretty rad. It's going to be done with all like carbon fiber molding um, and some pretty trick stuff. So it should be cool. That's awesome. How much power do you think it's going to make? I don't know. I think the, I think the rated horsepower from Ferrari is like 505. Um, I think with an exhaust and obviously we're going to be running a Motec on it. Uh, with some tuning, I couldn't tell you. I think they're pretty strung out already, so I don't mm -hmm. think we'll make much more horsepower out of that. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I'm hoping 550 at the rear wheels with probably the coolest engine note I've ever heard. Yeah, it's gonna sound Outside insane. of like Formula One and IndyCar stuff. Yeah, it'll sound like an IndyCar, I think. Um, <clears throat> so the intake, just to clarify, it's going behind the front wheels? It will be, yeah, the intake filters will be behind the front wheels coming, you know, not out of the side fenders, but behind the fenders. Right so you won't even really be able to see it unless you stick, poke your head around. That's awesome. Um, what transmission are you using? We're going to be running a five-speed sequential Thornton box. Um, I don't have experience with them, but they are, they have been around forever and make a super legit product. So um, it's also has flat shift got a strain gauge on the shifter and all that so we'll tune that all in and it should be pretty cool awesome uh this dude's trying to slip into the dms we're not gonna <laughs> <laughs> why not <laughs> i don't think we should um uh who introduced you to drifting um <clears throat> i guess well without even knowing what drifting was or is at that time um i was introduced to it 
by uh, an old friend that picked me and my brother up mm -hmm. uh, in a Mustang, and he just took us for a hell ride all around town, just doing burnouts, mm -hmm. donuts, um, just trying to drift sideways out of like stops, uh, little stops like 90s and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know what drifting was at that point, but I knew yeah. I wanted to drive rec recklessly just like that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, me and my brother pulled our money together and bought a Mustang, and that's what we started doing. And then. Shortly after that summer, I found out drifting was an actual sport, mm -hmm. and I just kind of come to the U.S. They had D1, mm -hmm. um, D1 at Irwindale, and started. This is like back when Kazaa. Mm -hmm. Anybody oh, yeah, remember yeah, Kazaa? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Download videos mm -hmm. like iTunes style, um, or not iTunes style, Napster style. Napster style. Napster yeah. style. It's Kazaa and LimeWire. Yeah. 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 So I started downloading all these videos, and that's what we found. We found out that drifting was an actual sport in Japan. Like options two video, option yeah. two videos. Yeah, then found out about option videos and <clears throat> found a place to buy those, and I'd buy those, and I'd watch those videos religiously. Yeah. Like, they had all the in-car stuff. It was super cool. So um, that's kind of how I learned about drifting, and then I sold the Mustang on a 240, mm -hmm. and the f I actually found a really legit 240, 91, or no, 92 LX, or LI, I forget, it was like the leather model. Mm -hmm. Sunroof, super clean, no yeah. rot in the chassis, this is back in 2003. And that's rare on the East Coast. Super rare. Um, bought it for 1900 bucks, and as soon as I bought it, I took it back to this uh, little street that I like to get a little sideways on. Yeah, the driveway up here. It had... Is that the driveway up here? No, 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 no. this is well before that. All right, now. Um, so I had good rear tires on it and mm -hmm. complete shit front tires. <laughs> so I tried to kick it around this turn and understeered right off the side of the road into this. The only rock on the side of the road is oh, the one geez. that I ran into. So it wasn't bad, but it had all the scuffs on the bumper and dented the uh, radiator support a little bit. And this is like the first three hours I had the car. <laughs> um, so as we know, like S13, S chassis, are becoming crazy expensive. Yeah. Um, what would you suggest for a beginner drifter? Um, I think the BMWs, which are relatively cheap, or as cheap as a 240, maybe cheaper. I haven't looked a ton into Craigslist on that, but. Maybe E36? Um, yeah, if you get like a 36, um, I forget which ones they are. The engines with the 2.8s go pretty good. Um, you can actually slide those NA, just get some 15s, pump the part, uh, boost the tire pressure up. And uh, those will kick it around the track pretty good. Uh, you don't need to do much else. They have pretty good steering angle right out of the box. Mm -hmm. um, just put some safety stuff in it, put some coilovers on it. I'm not sure what the differential options are, but uh, besides the 240, I think that's the next best, next best option. Who is Ryan Turk? <laughs> Did somebody else answer that? <laughs> James. Yeah, James, who's our intern? Whatever, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's a ghost. Um, yeah. Is the, uh, is the Ferrari car going to have um, a Rocket Bunny kit on it? I don't know yet. No? I want it to. Yeah? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on that still. Cool. Um, a lot of people are asking if you're ever going to go to Gateville. Um, Gat bill? Gat bill. bill. Gat bill. Yeah, uh, we were trying to. I was trying to work it out with Osbo this year, and uh, it was just too late. We um, started having a conversation probably about two weeks beforehand, and just wasn't enough time to make it happen. Um, I did go there back in 2013 and had the one of the best times ever. That track, Rudskogen, is probably my favorite car, uh, favorite track I've ever drifted on. In everywhere I've been, I mean, I don't. It's absolutely incredible, the elevation changes, the amount of turns on the track, uh, how fast it is, the long uphill straightaway on the main drag um, into that nice tight, um, like a little further than 90 degree turn, it's just super sick. There's just so much to that track, so many different elements, it makes for a really good time. And then the party is pretty good too. Yeah, that's the best part. I mean, us drift guys, <laughs> <laughs> we love a good party. Uh, <laughs> Even in our old age. Yeah, us old drift dudes. I mean, we always say, drift first, party close second. Um, I thought it was party first and you're 
case. Well, yes. Then I got. Since you don't really do much actual <laughs> driving. <laughs> and by not much, you mean any at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for. I'm like. I'm a good guy to have. Like in the pits. Uh, yeah, or in the passenger yeah, seat. Yeah, I'd bring up morale. Yeah. Um, Pumphrey, hit that e-brake for me. I'm gonna go into this. Town. <laughs> um. What else we got? Just gonna shout out to Slammer M9. Shout out? You doing yeah. shout outs? Yeah. This dude is. What is the sickest part of becoming pro from your missile days? Snow, what the coolest thing you experienced since being pro? Uh, I guess all the travel for sure is just <clears throat> being able to meet people that are all like minded out in the world um, that I never assumed that I'd get to do, like go to, go to different countries in Eastern Europe. <clears throat> um, the UK, Ireland, everywhere. It's just, uh, it's been a really cool experience. Um, you meet a lot of really rad people that have like the same mentality that you do and you just connect with people even though there's sometimes a language barrier, it doesn't even matter. It's just uh, all about having fun and driving cars. And um, you know, some of the coolest people I met were the fail crew dudes, um, my buddy Max. Um, really helped out in a lot of ways for me to compete over there in the Drift All-Stars round in Estonia. Um, and just being an all-around great dude. He invited me out to Gap Bill the year that I went and um, the HGK guys supplied a car. Um, so it's just been, it's just cool, man. People are just down to lend a hand and make things happen and I feel like those are the best experiences that I've had turning pro and, and all those opportunities of uh, travel. Right on. Can These you, are uh, people in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Why is your phone not on mute though? It's like the movies, dude. Like the prompt comes up and now you're the dickhead. Yeah, well, I think I was the dickhead before. <laughs> <laughs> I was already the dickhead. Uh, what do we got? Lindsey Ross says you owe her a 93S13 coupe. Uh, yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a <laughs> lie, actually. <laughs> I did not break the chassis, I broke the engine in the chassis. So actually, I owe you a twin cam KA, yeah. which I actually just sold. So, sorry. It's not happening. <laughs> uh, one of our, our creative director wanted to buy that car. So uh, somebody wants to know what's up with the 1JZ S13. Uh, the 1J is just chilling. It needs some work. Um, needs some updates. Like uh, I got to put a super doof kit on it. Um, needs some paint. It needs a water pump, serpentine belt, chassis wiring, engine harness. All these things do work on the car still. They just everything is just so haggard on it. Um, and the the front end needs to be tubbed so it's all proper. The uh, back when I had that big crash into the slide ride car, it uh, moved the front ride support pretty good. So and it's just cars there. Car works. It just needs a lot of updates, and I have no time to work on it because um, I usually doing demos with the uh, FRS street car and or just traveling, doing other stuff like hanging out here at Donut Media Headquarters, 3,000 miles from my garage. <laughs> uh, Jared, uh, the announcer of FT says, what's up? Hi. <laughs> what's up, Jared? What's up, Jared? Your Instagram is lit, dude. Love seeing the kids, bro. I'm glad you like that new beer and wine spot in your town, dog. <laughs> um, uh, is this guy, on the right in a play near DTLA, I saw him. Yes, I am. I am currently in a play. You're in a play? What play? It's called Four Chords and a Gun. It's about the Ramones. Give us a little. Uh, nah, I can't. Sell it, dude. I want to buy it. It's Make great. me want to buy a ticket. Great play. Um, we or gotta... is it free? Is it a free show? No, it's not free. Your 25 bucks. Huh? Your uh, I got I got to do a New York accent in it. I play, it. I play Marky Ramone. Um, I can only do it if it, yeah, so it's like, it's 1978. Murder rates at about four a day, and a lot of those feel like they're happening just like right outside, like right out there. The fans are great, but there's not a lot of them. Yeah, it's great. Uh, uh, Jared wants to know if I ever use sunscreen ever. <laughs> I was actually thinking about that in the car today. I was like, man, I really need to start wearing sunscreen. What? Yeah, why? You, you've been red since I last saw you I've two months ago. Bored, two months ago, you were as red as you are now. Well, I'm just like a pink boy to begin with. I and mean, I'm driving a lot this summer, man. Like, this arm is really tan. <laughs> 
Sitting in that LA traffic driving Dude, a lot. Dude, it sucks. Uh, shout out from 501 Racing. What up? Uh, we already answered that question, Nick Thompson. <laughs> Around 550. Maybe, who knows? Who knows? It's pretty it's maxed out. You know, territory. You know, it's like... For me. Uh, this dude's eating a donut right now. Oh, and he plans to take the uh, Ferrari FRS to Italy. Do I? Do you, yeah, do you want Why? to? Why? To, to do like you a, want? To, What's a, going on down there? Rip up some I, Italian tracks. Cool, I'm down. I mean, that's, I took a dude, they just sent him in. I'm you. down, I'll go. All right, cool. Let's set it up. <laughs> Jacob, we're gonna do a Turk in Italy once the car's done? <laughs> Turk Roma. Um, what else we got? Pull some Instagram. My Instagram? Okay. Pull some questions from my to, Instagram. Shut your tree. mouth, Pumphrey. I'm answering questions here. Well, I thought I'd fill the gap. Like, <laughs> but it's cool. We'll just, we'll just be quiet. All right. Gay Andy asks, what about the plenum and the windshield? Well, if you tuned in at 9 a.m., we already answered that question, you jerk. Yeah. Come by and we'll, we'll talk to you. What inspired you to do the engine swap? Well, my ultimate goal was to put a Formula One engine in a streetcar chassis, but that is a little bit out of, uh, you know, I think you need closer to a million dollars to make that happen. We actually looked into it. I had uh, Nameless is uh, one of their big customers is um, Cosworth. So I had him send an email over to the guy he deals with and came back with some pretty crazy uh, figures of engine costs and engine retuning uh, and then the maintenance required in the mm -hmm. ECU package and all that is uh, a little bit out of my price range. Yeah. So um, and the, the maintenance next... on this engine is going to be insane, right? No. No? No, it's the new, I don't know. Well, I guess I shouldn't say it's not going to be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know to be, ex yeah. to be honest, but my buddy Damon from Daily Driven Exotics, he has put like 30,000 kilometers on his 458 and he drives the absolute piss out of that car. And uh, he's, it's been all good. And he drove it from Montreal to here and back. And, well, not only did he do that, he started in Boston for the, um, when it, for his rally, drove it to, um, I think, uh, Nashville. Mm -hmm. And then all the other cars got loaded up and transported to Colorado. Mm -hmm. And instead of transporting his on an open transporter or whatever, he decided to drive all the way to Colorado That's and crazy. meet back up with everybody and then drove from Colorado to here to meet up with you guys mm -hmm. and then drove all the way up to Vancouver. That's gnarly. In his 458. So and pretty so sick. And he drives it hard. He drives it really hard. So I kind of base my maintenance intervals or schedule or whatever based off of what he has uh, accomplished in that car. So um, we should be good, I think. Right on. Um, you're in the desert. Uh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it's from uh, Blade Runner. Sam. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> a replicant question. <laughs> um. Can you NFD drift the Pro GT86 FRS with a Ferrari engine? If so, are you leaving the 2J? Q&A, Ryan Turk. Um, yeah, I mean, we can drift any car with any engine, basically, but this will not be a Formula D car. This is gonna be, once again, this is mainly for demos, video projects, shows, and just having an all around kick-ass time in a car that has a really sweet sound. Um, so this is an entirely new build for everybody wondering if I'm replacing a 2JZ engine. This car is going to be uh, the number three, number three FRS in the garage. Um, and the other two, the pro car and the street car, will both remain with the 2Js. Cool. And no force induction stain. Stain in it. Right for now, anyway. Cool. I don't really, I don't want to put turbos on it because then it's just going to... Kill the, the uh, kill the sweet NA sounds of that engine. So how much, what percentage of your motivation to build this car is the sound? Um, pretty much all of it. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much all of it. Cool. So that's if there it. was a cheaper, uh, lesser engine available, 
with that sound, then I would still do that. If there was a what? A cheaper, lesser mm -hmm. engine that had yeah. the same sound, I would yeah. still do that. Just It sounds so sick. It makes good power. It's from an Italian supercar. That's probably one of the best to drive out there and experience a, a, an actual supercar. So, yeah. That's sick. Uh, when's your merch site coming up? The merch site, it might be live today, actually. We're just working out the bugs, making sure the shop and the shipping stuff all calculate properly. Um, so check back maybe tonight, and it might be live by then. Um, RyanTurk.com. This dude says uh, a B18C sounds as good as a Ferrari motor. Well, I mean, that's just like your opinion. <laughs> Everyone knows that the B18C is unbeatable. It's the best engine ever made. It's got VTOC. Is this a question? No, yeah. Because no, if it statement. is, then no, it's not. Yeah. Well, there's, there's a guy that said it. Um, you're going to put a 2JZ in a Ferrari? What's that? Are you going to put a 2J in a Ferrari? Uh, well, I mean, a Ferrari is mid-engine. That's not a drift car. Yeah. It could be, but it'd be very difficult to drift, as I experienced in the Turk episode. Um... When uh, are you going to Minnesota? These guys are starting to troll. Um, <laughs> you can only let the internet go for a half hour, and then they start saying the other F word. <laughs> Genesis Coop? Yeah, yeah, what do you think of Genesis Coop? I don't know. Is that Why just that in the question line? <laughs> yeah, Is that a question? Yeah. Diego just a uh, Lambo. Daigo. Yeah, Daigo. Daigo. Yeah. Daigo has the Lambo. That thing's sick. He has that working good. What's your favorite FD memory? Uh, it's not a good one. No? <laughs> what, what is it? It's a wild ass story of hardship and heartbreak. Dude, I think this is our last question. Let's dig in. <laughs> so yeah, this, is back, in, this is back in 2007 when me uh -huh. and Tony Angelo are running our own team. We call it Team Snake Bite. Um, we had really no money and just enough to get by, but um, with a lot of struggling car issues pretty much every round. I was breaking throttle bodies and sucking the screws through the engine. And um, so that happened basically every event. And to add to that, my uh, Dodge pickup truck mm -hmm. was towing a big 40, 48 foot uh, trailer for mm -hmm. me and Tony's cars and it could barely handle it, so it was breaking transmissions or breaking down quite often. <laughs> so the story goes, we have a cross-country trip, and me, Chris, Forsberg, uh, I mean, yeah, me, me, Forsberg, Tony, and Vaughn all decide to do a Drift Alliance road trip mm -hmm. across the U.S. from, I think, New Jersey all the way to um, back it's to a, California. It's a pretty stacked crew. Yeah, yeah. And we had our um, filmer, Andrew Lapuka, who films all the Turk stuff and does a lot of projects here at Donut, too. Um, so he was filming it all. This is all in Stay Hungry DVD that we put out a long time ago. So anyway, we're, getting, we're going across the country. We're having fun, stopping at night, partying, whatever. Um, Tony's got a broken car. I also have a broken car and a trailer. So we're just trying to get back to the West Coast to fix our cars and get ready for the next round, which is in Seattle. Uh, we get to just on the other side of Texas, uh, and my transmission goes in the truck, or, or a gear goes. I felt it in, in the truck towing. So we pull over, grab a magnet, drain the fluid out, try to pull all the metal out, and uh, keep going. And then about 10 miles later, the entire transmission box almost like basically exploded. Every single gear in the thing was just trashed. So we had to tow the... Forsberg towed the trailer to, um, I think, all the way to Vivid Racing in Arizona. <coughs> we dropped it off there. And then my truck had to get towed somewhere else to get fixed. And we were staying at Jared DeAnda's house. Thank you for letting us stay. We're all just a bunch of punks. Um, and it took forever to get fixed. Now it's like a week before, um, f week before Formula D Seattle. And transmission costs like 3,500 bucks. Um, had to put on a credit card. I had no cash. <coughs> Get the car back. I literally drive through the night, 
go to the shop where Tony's dynoing his car, pull his car off the dyno, straight into the trailer. We're driving up to just get cleaned up. Everybody's just wrecked, uh, working so hard and nobody's been sleeping. So we pull off the exit to go get cleaned up and pack our bags and my truck is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we pull off to the side as quickly as possible. The trailer's like, I, I try making a right turn onto the side road. The trailer's like stuck in traffic out in the main road and we pop the hood, the thing is smoking. We just like start tearing our freaking shirts off, trying to put the fire out and it's, our buddy Dave, who was crewing for us that year, smartened up and went and grabbed some water and put the fire out for us. Dude, that's gnarly. And then right after that, we're all like, there's like debris on us and we're all like charcoaled up and uh, then it just starts raining. We're all just sitting there in the middle of the road, the hood up, and uh, it just starts pouring on us. So I get back in a truck, realize the turbo's smoked in the truck, and we, this is up like, we're getting down too. We have to leave mm -hmm. to get to Seattle in time for Formula D. So find a turbo. It was a direct bolt-on replacement. Mm -hmm. um, just charge that in the credit card, no big deal. Mm -hmm. And I uh, leave, start driving through the night, make it to Seattle. We put like a, ni a new livery on Tony's car. Um, the next day, we're in uh, practice and qualifying, mm -hmm. and I pull up to the line for my first qualifying lap. And uh, my, uh, actually no, before that, sorry, before that, in practice, like Thursday open practice, my clutch disc welded itself to the flywheel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was a ton of fun. And then the next day, just before qualifying, um, the uh, bottom end of my engine goes. So I was done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, nothing. Yeah, that, was, that, was, that was like a month-long situation of oh, hardship, yeah. heartbreak, and it ended in tragedy. That's crazy. Do you still ride BMX? Uh, not so much. No. <laughs> I still have my BMX bike, but right now I'd rather ride my dirt bike than uh, my BMX bike. Right on. Well, guys, thanks for tuning in to Facebook Live Turk Sorry Show. Sorry for the long story. Late night Turk Show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is our buddy Ryan Turk. You know, uh, I should remind you that I'm James Pumphrey. Um, uh, if Who are you? you? Who is James uh, Pumphrey? Who knows, man? Some dude doing a side show off the uh, 405 somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, we're getting some pretty good press. Uh, <laughs> Talks of New York. I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, if you missed anything, check out our YouTube channel. We're going to put the whole thing up there. Um, next time we do one of these. Drift Squid! Watch again. Drift Squid. Snake. Club Snake Bite. And, uh, <laughs> Team Snake Bite. Team Snake Bite. Uh, Club Loose. And uh, signing off, as us old Drift guys say, keep it sideways, America. Drift you later, dude. <laughs>